What does a church have to say to a person who says, I was born a homosexual or a bisexual? That's really a fair question in the debate that's going on in our culture today. And I think the church has to respond to it once again with a powerful balance of grace and truth. So I'd like to respond to it to the best of my understanding. Uh, there will be some that will debate whether a person is born this way or not, and I'm not studied enough to be able to say they are or they aren't. So I want to answer the question purely on its face. What if a person is born a certain way with a predisposition or craving for a particular activity or satisfaction? What do we say to them? Well, just because you're born that way, if the Bible has declared that it is sin, and that those behaviors associated with those cravings, desires, or predispositions, if those are sins, then we must honor the fact that the Bible has spoken about that, and it is not good for us to participate in those activities. So I know it's controversial to say that in today's world, but let me pose it in a way that might be balanced. What if a person is born heterosexual and has cravings for children and desires to be sexually active with children? we would certainly not look at that and say that that behavior is good for all, is safe, or is right. And so we prohibit that behavior and ask those people to find help, to find whatever they need to overcome those predispositions and not serve those. Instead, change the desires of their heart and find satisfactions in the things that God has offered them. And I would say the same thing to those who say that they're born bisexual or heterosexual or homosexual, and that have these cravings that are outside of God's will, that God is the solution to the problem. It's not laws, it's not acceptance, it's not tolerance, that if God has called any of our activities a sin, even if we're predisposed toward those, is not permission to continue to seek those. We live in a broken world, and all of us have our issues of obedience, and all of our have issues of things we desire in our hearts that God has said is not good for us and not what we were created for. So my encouragement is not to have this one verdict that simply says they were or they weren't, but to offer that there's a hope found in Jesus Christ that's bigger than these predispositions, bigger than these cravings, bigger than these desires. But I'm also well aware that we live in a culture that says, if we deny anyone personal satisfaction, how can we say we love them? So we have to find the balance of grace and truth, that we're going to uphold the word of God, and we're going to say, we're going to call sin, sin. And we're going to help sinners like myself to overcome our sinful nature by seeking the sanctification and holiness of God in Christ and allow him to meet our needs rather than relying on others to meet our needs.